Good morning. I'm here to uh, talk about something that's pretty straightforward, but a lot of horses won't do, and that is jump right out of their tracks. When you ask them to go somewhere, they go, but they go in glacial time. They move in geologic time. Instead of jumping up there like a fellow would when he's springing after a tennis ball, they wait and cogitate and ruminate like somebody does when they're waiting to make the next move in a chess match. And you, you sometimes need more responsiveness. The first basic of horsemanship is forward motion. And when you don't have that, or if that gets rusty on your horse, your first job is to lubricate that and get that working for you, because without it, you're really just wasting your time with the other elements. So not to sit here and talk too long, but there is a reason, because I want him to get relaxed here. Uh, I'm going to say two things quick. If he drools, he's been out in the pasture and has a fair bit of clover in it, and that will make him drool. It's harmless. Just want to make sure they have plenty of water. And if they drool too much, I'll bring him in a day or two, feed him dry hay. So don't think he's got a problem with his mouth or his teeth or his bit. It's, it's uh, uh, in his view, a good thing, that clover that he enjoys so much. So when this really came home to me, the fact that a lot of nice horses will not just spring right out of their tracks was at a Ray Hunt clinic. I went to a couple of those clinics over the years and each one of them I came away with, with some things that really profoundly changed the way I looked at things. So we were doing a clinic, uh, this was in 97, at Willowbrook Farm, I'd taken a young horse up to start there and that's a whole, that could be a whole nother reminiscence. Uh, but Ray Hunt was not a real well man at that time. He was in his early 70s and he had begun to have the first critical signs of the emphysema that would ultimately claim his life about 10 years later. So he had had an episode down south, I think in South Carolina or Georgia, actually had a collapsed lung. Tough enough, he missed that week's clinic when he's in the hospital, was up at Willowbrook the next week, horseback most of the day. But he was on oxygen, he had a tank, and he was riding a little peppy sand bread mare, and she carried him through that clinic like she was his right hand. But about the middle of the second day, he went through this sort of like, he started to, to, to lose energy. And he looks, takes a breath, he says, well, hell, I'm out of air. So his wife runs out, they swap cylinders. He takes a big swallow of that air, and it was, it was real gallantry. He goes, yee Kicks his horse in the belly and jumps her about 30 feet. I feel better. And I thought, you know, you learn a couple of things from that. One is you got to be tough if you're going to persist. But the other is a lot of horses wouldn't jump that 30 feet. Or if they did, they'd be worried about it for the rest of the day. So I, I thought right then, I want to have my horse to where I can jump them out of their tracks if I need to. I want to, if there's a cow up there that needs to be headed, I can't plot out what I'm going to do. I just need to get there. So. What I've done here, I've been talking. It's not just coincidental. I want him just as lazy as can be because I'm gonna ambush him a little and I'm not even gonna apologize. I'm gonna ask him not just to move forward, but to jump forward. And in fairness to him, I suspect he's gonna be rusty. I haven't done this for a while. And I thought, well, isn't that the best possible time that I could just show this? So I'm not gonna ask him like I wanted him to walk off. I'm going to ask him like I want him to run off and then hope he does. So here we go. So you see a couple of, a couple of things there. Number one, he was extremely sluggish. Number two, he's barely warmed up. So he had a little bit of hump in him. Bear that in mind. I hesitated to make this video because I got one person just flat bucked off, had a horse that was really sticky in her feet. I said, just jump around to her tracks a few times. Well, when that stickiness comes out, if they've got some resentment toward you jumping them out, 
if they've got some sticky feet going on that they don't want to give up, suddenly they'll go from being comatose to trying to buck you off. So I'm just going to do it again. Now he should move off better this time. But not great. And see he's all over the place and he wants to hop in the air. And I'm not worried about that. That comes from a lack of forward motion. What I'm not going to do is say, oh my gosh, you jumped a bit. Now I'm going to throttle you down or pull you in the ground or punish you for doing what I just asked you to do. No, I'm going to let him run off for a while till he kind of untracks. And I'm running my mouth again so he grows roots, maybe. Now I'm going to put my leg into him. And it's not, I'm not asking for a nice little candidate part. I'm not asking for anything sophisticated. I'm asking for him to get his ass in gear. So I'm going to put a leg into him. And he blew me off for a while, but then he untracked and went somewhere. And that's freshening up his whole attitude. You don't worry about the lead, you don't worry about anything except getting your horse to jump from here to there. So, here we go. Good bit better. And he can hop around and change leads and crossfire. I really don't care. This is all about get from here to there right now. That cow's up there heading for the gate that opens onto the highway. And we live in the east, so it's the Baltimore Beltway. And it's instant death for anybody who hits it a foot. You gotta head that cow or you're gonna have a wreck. So you wanna be able to head the cow without having a wreck yourself. So I'm gonna put a leg into him and we're gonna jump out. And that time he did what I asked him to. Now, if your horse gets overexcited, don't pull him in the ground, don't just check him back, bend him around and spiral down. So I'm going to jump him off and then I'm going to show what you do if your horse overreacts, which he probably won't do. I don't want him too apprehensive, but I want him aware. Go, go, go. So if he's running off, take his head, just sort of spiral down. You don't need to do a one rain, rain stop unless you need to save your life and you just walk him around till he relaxes. Now, will this rev your horse up for a while? Yeah. Will it take him a little hair trigger off your legs? Yeah. Is it pretty to watch? No. A lot of horse training is either boring or ugly to watch. And there's times when it has to get ugly before it gets pretty. And there's times you have to just live through the boring spell to get to the good stuff to get the horse to where they can offer you the good stuff. So let's see if I can gallop him off. Kind of like I'm getting that breath of oxygen. <laughs> Woo! And that time I caught the cow. Now let's see what that does. This horse has a tendency when you first get him out, he will be so hollowed out and uncollected because he doesn't have a lot of forward motion that he doesn't really engage himself and he'll trot along sort of haphazardly and lope along sort of half-heartedly. But now that he's got a little bit more response built in when I trot him, See how he's up in the bridle. He's softer because he's got forward motion. And 
he's bringing his back end underneath him and he's more engaged. And jumping them out like that helps you to build an on-off switch on your horse. And we have a video specifically regarding the on-off switch. And if you were to watch that, it's an early video, we'll put a, a, a link up to it. You might find that the two go together pretty well. So the original one, I think it has a picture of my dog on it because I used him to demonstrate. Which if that doesn't make you curious, I don't know what will. But see, you, you don't want your horse to get hot, but you will get them more alert. Now let's give him a little test. So we're here in the takeoff zone. So I'm going to do a nice little canter part and see if he jumps out of his skin. And he raised up a tiny bit because he was over trying. With this horse, a little bit of over try is a welcome change because he the way and not doing everything he could do. So ask yourself, will my horse jump out of his tracks? Experiment with it, but remember, if he's got some buck in there, you may want to notch this back and just trot him out for a while, but make him give you an effort. So if you want him to give you an effort and he's not ready to gallop out, not your degree of difficulty back. Don't get in a jam. But in short order, you should be able to jump your horse out and catch that cow before it gets out on Route 695. Till next time.